Welcome to your Matrixes, Jonathan and Shiva. Today we have another very exciting video, and this video builds actually ultimately based on the two previous videos which we have already shot. Hypnosis, Machine of the Matrix, and Time Loops, the Loopers. Jonathan had a very exciting dream based on this. We then had a very interesting conversation which led to many findings led. We will now have this conversation again as best we can understand it so that you can also share in our findings, Can Yes, Jonathan, what exciting dream do you have? Tell me. Yes, so recently I had a dream and in the dream I became back in time around my 20s. And there I found myself in a club with several friends. We were talking and after a while I was like, oh, I'll go outside and then have myself outside sat down. There were tables and chairs there, you know, and while I was there, I was sitting outside when I suddenly heard a strange noise. And that noise, and this noise always sounded like a pop. Pop. And then I thought to myself, where is this noise coming from? And then I searched the area a bit, and the outside area bordered a larger building and was on the third floor. A man looked out. He always threw down a tennis ball. He obviously wanted to get attention, and then I noticed him, and then I told him why he throws the tennis balls underneath. And that's when he said, yes, he wanted someone's attention excited because he has an important suitcase. And then I said to him, what kind of suitcase? And then he said, yes, that's a suitcase that's supposed to go to a certain place person. And then I said to him, yes, why don't you go and give the person the suitcase? And then he said, yes, he's lost his legs, he can't do it anymore, run, but the suitcase must definitely be passed on to the person become. And then I said, yes, okay, then give me the suitcase, then I'll do that for you. And then he lowered my suitcase and then gave me one building described where I should go, and then I can do it there, hand over suitcase. So I grab the suitcase, leave the club, and look for that building up. When I entered the building, I found three security guards there. They were armed and seemed pretty excited, and then I said to them, Yes, what is going on here? Why are you so on alert? And he said, Yes, they are coming. And then I said to him, who is coming? Yes, they want to get something here. And then I immediately thought of the suitcase. But I had the feeling that those who were coming weren't the ones who were there to whom I should hand over the suitcase. Anyway, the security guard was pretty excited and gave it to me too, a pistol. I then took the pistol and said, yes, good, I help you. that maybe we somehow don't let them into the building. Yes, the security guards then spread out and I got them too, no longer seen. And at some point a woman showed up and she was also armed. And then she saw my suitcase and said she really wanted it, have suitcases. And I had the pistol in the back of my pants book. And then I thought to myself, yes, I should have a shootout with her now, start to defend the suitcase. And I had my doubts and then didn't do anything. Yes, and then she took the suitcase away from me, got the suitcase opened and said, yes, excellent, that's what we were looking for. But I knew that it wasn't the person who actually had the suitcase belonged or should get. And then two of her companions came, a man and a woman. They were also armed, and at some point there was, as is supposed to be, I say yes, a little argument, because I then I thought about not giving them the suitcase, and I thought so too said, I want to give them the suitcase of the person who has the 
suitcase also heard, and that's why she should give me the suitcase back. But she didn't want that. And then there was a shootout in which I killed the woman, the leader, and then the other two shot me. So it didn't go so well, and then everything was black, and when I came to, I felt my breath. And I breathed more and more and more. It was like I started breathing again. And then I suddenly realized because I also have such a machine, heard a ventilator in the background that I was probably in one was in the hospital and had survived this shooting, just like that. And then I noticed the transition, how slow my own breathing was started again and the ventilator was gradually switched off became. What was very interesting at that moment was that I knew that I realized at that moment that this wasn't the first time experience being connected to such a ventilator and in to live in this hospital. And I immediately realized that I had probably been in this place several times before, had been in the hospital, and realized that I was in one kind of a time loop. That means I played through this situation over and over again. Meet the man, take the suitcase, go into the building, and so on further. And yes, it probably didn't work out again this time, solve time loop correctly. A bit like, yes, the groundhog greets you every day. Everyone knows the film. It's so similar that someone keeps doing the same thing over and over again, day after he wakes up. And for me, it was probably always this same day and the beginning of it, just to come to me in this hospital. And then I opened my eyes and there were a few friends there. Me, They said, well, Jonathan, you're back, you're alive and great and so on. And then I realized that something was wrong. This was not my stay in this hospital after this shooting, but before. And then it was clear to me that with the suitcase and so on, the encounter with the leader and her two companions was imminent. And the next moment something clicked in my head and then I, I saw you. We stood somewhere on some level of reality and were over-talked about this case, about this time loop. And you found that very interesting after I told you about this time loop had told. And then we thought about what we could do about this to solve the time loop optimally or out of this time loop to come out. And then I somehow came to the conclusion that the best thing would be if I killed the woman right at the beginning with the pistol. Because then their companions wouldn't see that I was the shooter and then they wouldn't chase me and shoot me. And so I wouldn't stay in the hospital again. This could perhaps break the time loop. Then it clicked again, and I found myself in this club again with my friends. We chatted and talked there just like in the first round, and then I thought again, oh, I'll go to that one outdoor area. Then I heard that pop, pop again, and I made contact with the man, got one that had no legs, and he gave me his head. I then went back into the building where I handed over the suitcase was supposed to, and there I met the security guards again who gave me a gun again, but at least now I knew I was in there. It was a time loop this time, and I knew that would happen soon. A woman would show up and demand the suitcase. And sure enough, the woman showed up and wanted the suitcase me. And I thought about it. I'm going to take out the gun and shoot him, the woman, and the time loop is done. That was my first thought. But then another part of me started to ponder and then said, yeah, are we really solving the time loop with this? What if I shoot the woman now? Maybe it's better to just be an observer of it all time loop instead of always trying to interfere 
actions to carry out or carry out actions that then ensure this, could the time loop be interrupted? Should I really always interfere in the process? And while I was debating in my head what I should do now, should and what not to do, of course I have the moment missed shooting the woman straight away to close the time loop end, at least in the hope that it will then be ended. Yes, then of course her two companions appeared again and they then looked into the suitcase and were happy with the suitcase. And the next moment, yes, how should I put it? It was in for me the moment, so that through this discussion with myself, yes, actually remained an observer. Because I had the chance to shoot her in the first place, actually not used. So I was more of an observer, the one with myself discussed and did nothing, did no actions. And then at some point I woke up in my bed. So that was the dream. Yes, when you look at the dream like that, you think, yes, okay, there was a dream in a time loop, but that's how exciting it was now, not. But if you take a closer look at the dream, there are many hidden elements that you don't even notice at first glance. Correct. We talked about it for a really long time and thought it was a shame that we didn't record it straight away because we discovered there are around hundreds of people just interested in the topic of time loops. Rat. Tales attached really, really deep and all summarized to form a really big picture, practically almost like the solution. Yes, the first thing is the element of observer and interference, or try to resolve the time loop by stopping the action intervenes. I remember two or more of my dreams, but ultimately that was always the case in my time loop dreams, so that at the end I played through the scene, rewound, and went through the scene again, and got everything just observed. And at the end, there was just a realization, that is, by not interfering and just I observed, the realization actually emerged. And that situation or the time loop resolved. Then very exciting things always happen simply because of that. I didn't interfere. But I was also aware that I was in a time loop and observed. Sure, if you're in a time loop and you're unconscious and you, if it's not clear that it's a time loop, you play it. Of course, again, 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 again. Let's get to everyday life later. But if you are conscious and know that there is a time loop is, and remember, it is also important to remember. And observe, and then the big realization comes and bang, that's it, second zeal dissolved. I found that very exciting as an element. Yes, yeah, sure, of course you could say, yes, Jonathan, you're stupid. Why did you even accept the suitcase in the beginning? If you hadn't accepted the suitcase, that would have been it didn't happen at all. Yes, that was my first thought too. But if you think back to the discussion now, you should to interfere or not would be to refuse the suitcase been interfering. Correct. It's easy, like in lucid dreams, for example. If you are an observer, then the action is of itself, and you, you gain a lot more knowledge, or you are shown a lot more, as if you were interfering now. Because then the dream ends much faster. It makes a difference just observing it. And the end really stands as soon as you become aware of the time loop. You really go through a great realization without amnesia, integration, breaking. Time loops something, it's just difficult to hold back at that moment and really just being an observer. Well, it's easier in dreams. Where it isn't easier is in everyday life. Yes, that is correct. So now that you think about it, you've had those before time loop dreams. I've had several of them two time loop dreams. Then the thought came that there seems to be one even from us. Exactly. This on another level on 4D most likely all the time has this reality that he goes into a time loop and this playing through time loops. Now I get it too. Just then it occurred to me why that is also connected to the listening itself. This time loop. 
because the listener always tries to find an exit from the matrix find. And to do that, you have to go through the time loops so many times until you has broken through it or goes through the time loop and loose it in everyday life. And that's why this time loop itself exists, because you said that you are always programming. I remember the true self and always or often just in you end up in these time loop dreams. And then we came up with the fact that there is a or you that that one time loops themselves exist. Yes, of course, that's completely necessary, these time loops themselves. And clearly it is the connecting self to the true self so that it is the goes through time loops to finally resolve them. Because as we have also discovered, everyday life is one, two, time loop. Correct. That was actually very exciting. Right, yes. And if you think about it, for the 4D itself, that time loops themselves, as you could also say, are like that A scene is played out for him, then it is reset again at a certain point. For example, after waking up, or at, for me, it was the hospital. And we also have a kind of time loop here in everyday life in which we life. Just that we don't interpret this time loop as such, but for us, it is, yes, we live for a day, then lie down in the bed and then live the next day. And so we move forward in time into the future. And in our interpretation, in everyday life, it is not time loop, but a continuous experience of several days, like on a chain. Correct. But things are different for the time loop itself. Correct. For the time loop itself, it is not an ongoing experience of several days, weeks, months, years. But every day is a time loop. So it's always the same day. There is no morning day or past day. So there is practically no future or present. There is actually only one, if you want to call it a timeline, only to the side. There is no forward or backward time. Yes, yes, the present already exists, just it. There is only the present, time on the page, so only the eternal present on the pages. So there is no forward or backward movement, but actually just a sideways movement by always having the same day, or just like the time loop itself in different positions of the present ray. Right? That means we jump from present to present, so to speak, sideways. And then relive that day again. We just arrange it differently. Even we think we have a future or a past, but if there is no future or past, and that suddenly becomes pretty clear because there is only one moment. And many people talk like Eckhart Tolle about being in the now, being in the present, but everything we experience there is actually how we are. We realized in the conversation that we'll just count it all again now, just notice that this is not the true present at all. The true present is actually a point, a point of focus, so to speak. And this focus point runs on this temporal axis, on this looked at in the lateral timeline that way, right? Yeah, right. And the advantage that this time loop itself has, or that time self, or 4D self, or whatever you want to call it, apparently has the advantage of being aware of multiple realities, is... And for that reason, of course, it recognizes the days are not in one continuous chain built up, but they are all next to each other. And you just jump from one reality to the next, every day a variation into a time loop variation. But the question that this poses to me would be if that time loops themselves would be aware of all realities actually, then he could just, if we all time loops just once, then they wouldn't actually be time loops. Because being aware of the time loops, he would just be permanently the observer, would break all time loops, and we would be out of the matrix in no time. So he can't do that, at least not all the variations really aware of time loops, right? Yes, the question is, of course, how many of them are there? That is, of course, the question, and we just don't know. 
You can also see it in Groundhog Day, a very good film, I have to say, because that's really the problem treated a bit. And he doesn't experience the same thing every day. But he's also trying to break the time loop. I don't really remember. Exactly. He also tries to break the time loop, then try to do this and that. He learns all sorts of things. He learns to play the piano. He learns they're somehow being nicer to women, something he hadn't done before Hess. He was kind of a provocative grouch before anyway, also shaped his character and the like. So he experienced something different every day. So like us? Yes, that's right, just like us. And then he kept waking up in bed and then he... The alarm went off and then he heard the radio again like that, then said, yes, hello, today is Groundhog Day. And him again, oh no. But he was aware that he was stuck in the time loop, right? Yes, yes, right. Then he planned his day. He then tried to rob my bank, been shot, but he didn't care at all. Right, then he'll come back. He knew I would wake up again tomorrow. So he wasn't actually in everyday life, so to speak, but in time loops themselves. Correct, exactly. And if you look at it now from the 3D, from everyday life, one could also use all these realities that he played through, just rotate, and then see that one day follows the other. One day he learned to play the piano, another day he did, he's trying to impress a woman he thought was pretty. The next day he may have tried to rob a bank and the same, and there you can see the connections. His advantage was that when he was in the time loop himself, was on the astral plane, was 4D, and therefore much more conscious or more prelucid, I would say, than we are. Because we think, yes, every day is a new day and not actually the same one we have in the other variations. That means we actually get rebooted every day because we, unfortunately, they are not lucid enough in everyday life. That means we are reset, memory erased, and think. New day, new happiness. Let's move on. Yes, correct, and that's when you realize that the 4D itself has a different reality and a different interpretation of reality. And we in 3D reality in everyday life have a very strong tendency believing in death, for example. You could get under your car tomorrow or a comet could fall off it. Heaven and you're dead. And with the time loop itself, it's completely different because that time loops know that I'll wake up in one again, other reality. Correct. And with that, death no longer exists because when you die, the focus point, because we've established there is actually only one point that shifts on the page, is relocated somewhere else. Another reality. And that is the point that is always important to us to explain in our videos that there are many alternative realities of which we only think we live through. We wake up every morning and still think we are in the same reality as yesterday. Because no one tells us, or because we can't see it, we changed reality overnight. Another point comes to mind, and of course there are leaps in reality, that is, let us now assume that everyday life is one time loop, is where you play the same day over and over again. But of course, there are also leaps in reality where we focus really shift to another reality. Those would be the big changes in everyday life or in life. Like us, suddenly we no longer live in Austria, but are now here in beautiful Paraguay. So there's already that point really into a different reality, or the focus point is shifted to another reality. Well, now, of course, we have another time loop here that we have to try again to solve. Yes, that's what I wanted to say. So you can also be yourself again within everyday reality interfere and of course then cause a change in reality. For example, emigrating or going to another city. This then takes you back into another time loop. Well, that's pretty important. Try the time loops to break through. There are various theories about how to break through it by... Simply leaving the timeline, so to speak, by taking an action consciously, suddenly performs it differently. And then we had a conversation, observing and recognizing, or break time loops. 
There are, of course, many who say that time loops should be used breakthrough by, for example, yes, the example that gives me. The first thing that comes to mind when you go to the toilet is the toilet. Paper don't pull down with your left, but with your right and consciously makes. At that moment, you leave this one time loop and go into it another. You suddenly go with the point of consciousness or with that focus point in the secondary reality. Yes, but is it enough to unroll the toilet paper differently than usual? Coming out of a time loop, this is just to train the time loop into a sub-reality to shift or shift the focus to other realities. So that's what the training is supposed to show. Yes, but in the end we talked about it, watching or break through. So theoretically the best thing would still be to consciously observe because we know that at the end there is the great realization and the dissolution of the time loop as a result. Sure, you can try the point or the focus always in. Of course, others also learn to shift secondary realities. No realities, but that doesn't solve the time loops on. It really only works by observing and recognizing. Yes, the time loops, so the time loop itself experiences, that is very interesting because I always program these time loop dreams or rather always came in the night when I had programmed before bed. I remember, remember my true self. And the time loop itself isn't necessarily my true self, because that is just the 4D self. And so that means like my higher self then becomes me say, yes, if you want to be your true self, you have to be yourself. Now take care of it first. Like a bridge, so to speak. You could actually call it the bridge self, the portal self. And we also know this from Gnosticism. At least I know that. This is always the case with reincarnation research using hypnosis. Noticed again that certain hypnotized people who were in a other lives should be brought back through hypnosis sometimes in stuck in this life because it was a traumatic one experienced and didn't get any further. So you couldn't bring the person back to another life because they keep going back to this traumatic experience within of this life hanging. And that's the way it is. In principle, you can do a bit with it, compare. You try to be the true self or remember your true self. Remembering to evolve into your true self then comes across. But first, on your time loop itself. So according to the motto, get this done first. Well, that is the question, why? Why this needs to be done? Just with the experience with the looper, you notice that deja vu is also time loops. I experienced the same thing over and over again and was in that moment, but I was aware was an observer and crossed this bridge. Suddenly, I was a lot closer to my true self after I was lukewarm in everyday life. So this time loop itself must actually, the portal, the bridge, the passage of time, the deja vu again, the bridge to the true selfhood. So actually, we both have this in a very short space of time experienced the same. So it's no longer the case that I experience something like this or just you, but that several people experience it, experience the same thing and notice it then, yes, that is the bridge, that is where you come to the true self. This is not an isolated case, I would say that then, yes. Yes, if the knowledge gained through the time loops is that is that one should become more of an observer, then remember that's something, isn't it? Spiritual dissociation also occurs in everyday life about reaching the observer. Correct. So there we see the parallel between the 3D self and that 4D self. Correct. That's why the question is, what would actually happen if the time loop itself would dissociate? That would be an interesting thought. That would be interesting. So my body reacts to it anyway. The entire time of our entire conversation, my body just had goosebumps. Yes, you could also say, yes, everyday life itself takes it away. Reality is so true that one day follows the other towards the future. 
and that you should get to that state yourself by doing that can also perceive time loops themselves. As an example, what would happen if you could do this? To integrate time loops into everyday reality. So it's not like it isn't already integrated. The thing is, we have this time loop. So if it wasn't integrated, we wouldn't do it again and again. Play it like that. It wouldn't be what it is. The only thing is to remember and the time loop itself to make aware. And that goes through dissociation. So you want to say, as I see it too, that time loops themselves have long been integrated into everyday life, but we do not perceive it or are not aware of it, or we do not remember and interpret. The time loop itself, therefore, everyday life is completely different. Exactly, that's why we get booted every day. That's why we think tomorrow is the future, yesterday is the past because we are just didn't realize it or remember it. Always this amnesia, here we have them again. The next question that comes to mind is necessity of sleep. Yes, exactly. What does it mean when you experience the challenges of the time loop itself mastered? Do you then no longer need sleep? Because then you no longer have to reboot. Yes, the question is, of course, actually, so we train it anyway, consciously falling asleep and not remaining conscious during of lying down. How could you best say this, that's best, and not to fall asleep? If you were to be conscious all night now, you wouldn't forget. Correct. You wouldn't be rebooted, you still collect energy. The question is, I mean, the thing is, there isn't one complete reboot because you remember, what did you do yesterday, Eaton? Or what did you do yesterday? So what is being rebooted? So what does sleep really do? Yes, sleep sets, yes, sleep is a natural shift in your consciousness, the next reality. So actually, sleep puts a helmet on you so that you can don't remember. Yes, we already remember what happened yesterday. No, I wanted to say that you don't become aware of it exactly. Become aware that you are dreaming, that it is a time loop. Maybe we need sleep to continue in hypnosis to be held. It's just a theory, but who knows? Yes, it could be possible. So you can already tell that sleep always comes back to haunt us in the morning. Let's wake up. We notice that there are different types of dreams gives. So in my dream that I told you earlier, it was like that I had a blackout, then came to and had realized I'm in a time loop. But we have also experienced dreams where, like you did earlier, you said you just rewind and then watch the scene again flushed through. Where is this blackout? So it doesn't exist. So there are probably certain stages of development of a time loop self. Correct. Just like lucid in everyday life, you think, right? Yes, obviously, sure. There may then be a pre-lucid time loop itself and a lucid time loop itself. And the lucid time loop itself may not need one sleep more because he knows, oh, I can just rewind it complete. He doesn't have to go to sleep or have any kind of blackout anymore, live or die in the time loop to the next reality to start again from the beginning. Then it just rewinds. So we practically develop on several levels of our being, you could say, in consciousness. We are trying to become more aware on several levels, including this time loop itself correctly. And this interpretation, we have one interpretation of the time loop itself. Every reality coexists and are just an alternative version of the reality you are experiencing. 
And we interpret that every reality is always the same and is lined up and runs towards the future. And then you realize that this is just an interpretation. Correct. I think this makes it clear to you more quickly that we are human beings really create our reality ourselves with our own interpretations of reality. Correct. These are just subjective perceptions. Because if you were to say yourself in the time loop you are experiencing, there are no time loops at all. It's all days one after the other expire. He would probably do that. And when the time loop itself comes to us and says, you, yours days don't run one after the other, they are all next to each other and are just variations on the time loop, then we would probably like that make. So who is right? Well, that's the question. Yes, very exciting. If only one could reduce consciousness to one point, then you would be in absolute space, in absolute time, and could perceive everything very consciously and would be free. Yes, that is correct. So in a nutshell, yes, the question that arises from this is, what use is this to us? Information now in everyday life, or what should we do with it in everyday life, learn? And to become aware of the time loop itself. And in everyday life, at least pay attention to it or be aware of it, make it a time loop. That's important too. You just keep forgetting that. You live the day, you live in the day, you are identified with the day. You're just not enough of an observer, so to speak, and that's why you keep making the days anew. Or you can do the bridging yourself. Correct. And so the time loop itself is a major stop along the way to the true self. Correct. Apparently, you first have to be aware of it and master it must. Right, you have to integrate it completely, the time self, only then you will really be 100% involved in everyday life. Yeah, right. Yes, that is also very interesting because we are here in the everyday reality next to 3D was, as they say, but you know, it also gives a 4D reality. Correct. So that means when you learn to ascend from 3D reality, to example, in the next reality, in the 4D reality, you will, with the relativity of time, also more conscious. Correct. Because we all know that the 4D level or the astral level is the time level. Yes, that would be very exciting. That is, when you increase your consciousness to such an extent that you only... 4D thinks the perception will suddenly be completely different. The interpretation will be completely different, automatically. Correct. Yes, such a very exciting topic. Yes, really exciting. That's when you realize how dense the information is in a dream, Ken. And it was just about a time loop where you shoot a woman. But obviously that wasn't really the point. Because, yeah, do you remember, we were sitting on the balcony one night, and suddenly we both came to this state, this state of consciousness that aging and death is completely illogical. Yes, we recognized that. Correct, but it was illogical, but it had no logic, because we don't have any have information about why that is the case. But now, of course, we have the information why it's illogical is, and it is logical that it is illogical. Not true? So, right, since there is no future or past, since we are really purely theoretically, if we were fully aware of it only. Of course, we can't be a point on a time axis, go forward to age a day. This means we cannot age, nor can we theoretically die. So why do we age or die? That's just an interpretation from this perspective of perception out, that we don't know that we are in the time loop. But think we are going into tomorrow or we are going into the next year. And that's why we think, oh yeah, I need a new wrinkle, my knee must hurt. So according to the motto, just keep it simple. That's just what I said before, we create our own reality through our interpretations of reality. And since we believe that every day we experience is a chain of many days in which you eventually have to age, then that... 
will be the case. Then that will be the case. But it's illogical because there is a point. There is no forward or backward in the back. There is only to the side. And you don't age on the side because you stay the same. Yes, exciting anyway. How suddenly... So the time loop itself doesn't age, correct, because it doesn't interpret that as time passing. Time passes within the reality version, but he will, yes, always reset. So he can't age at all. Correct, he can only assume different points of your everyday life and so that it looks too. That would explain, because otherwise you would always be an example in fun. But you were in your 20s, so he took an element, some of your everyday realities, and then became this 20-something self, and then has these time loop felt. Practical, right? Yes, exactly. Otherwise, it would actually be timeless and would have no age. True, yes, but very exciting. Suddenly it makes death illogical. Yes, dear people, you hear, it's starting to make noise. We must come to an end. Exactly, that's why I would say it's a very exciting topic. Maybe it's the third video in a row. Obviously, our Hyrus itself wants us to do a lot of things right now, deal with time loops. That's why the current video took up a lot of time taken, because we have dealt with it intensively. First the hypnosis, then the deja vu, the magnifying glass, now again time loops. In between, I also had a time loop dream and a time loop experience, a very exciting one. And yes, who knows, maybe it's a series, one time loop series. We will be surprised. We let ourselves be guided by our videos. Okay, yes. Dear people, dear viewers, we are at the end arrived, and I would say thank you for watching and see you next time. See you next time. Take care. Ciao.